welcome to the 2013 Annual College America Graduation Commencement Ceremony. I present to you our distinguished faculty and graduates. Will everyone please rise? I'm also the regional director for our Fort Collins and Cheyenne, Wyoming campus. I'm honored to preside at College of America's commencement tonight, and at this time I'd like to take the time to uh, present you our stage party. John Jakura, Master of Ceremonies. <laughs> Dr. Terry Biff Gore, our commencement speaker. 
Casey Jakura, our Dean of Education. Travis Brown, Associate Dean of General Studies. Matthew Ketterling, Associate Dean of Healthcare and New Father. Jessica Baker, our salutatorian. Stuart Matlock, our valedictorian. Dina Hernandez, student success speaker. Mona Herman, sorry. Oh, we have two of them, sorry. Mona Herman, student success speaker. Michael Burke, our faculty speaker. And last but not least, Josh Allen, medical faculty. I would like to ask all the College of America faculty members to please rise. <laughs> possible for our students, what has taken them years of study and experience to learn, their knowledge and understanding is given to our students. Most of our faculty hold full and part-time jobs outside of education that enable them to bring the real issues of the business, computer, medical world to our students. Would you please give them a big round of applause. I'd also like to have the members of our College of America staff please rise. I know you're kind of scattered out throughout here. Not only have these individuals put this wonderful commencement together, but they are also the people who help our students on a daily basis and keep our Denver campus running. And I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to the Career and Student Services Departments for all their hard work and putting this all together, and to uh, Nathan Mizell as well for heading up that department. Let's give them a big hand. You may be seated. It is indeed a wonderful to see a great turnout for all of our new graduates. Our graduates today are composed of those students completing their academic requirements in the second half of the 2012 academic year and the first half of the 2013 academic year. Some of our graduates have already moved to other locations or could not be with us today, but let us celebrate for them as well. The students you see before you and their academic regalia did not come to this achievement easily. Their years of study took determination, perseverance, and at times the exclusion of other things and everyone else in their lives. It also took the help of loved ones to include spouses, parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, and even their own children. So I would like all those family members to please rise and give yourself a big round of applause. each and every one of you for our graduates here today. They would not be here if it was not for all of you. At this time I'd like to introduce our commencement speaker, Dr. Biff Gore. And Dr. Biff Gore currently serves as the worship and congregational care pastor at Highline Community Church, located in the Centennial Community of Greater Denver. Dr. Biff Gore is the President and CEO of Living Waters Transplant Foundation, which facilitates whole body donations to medical research in order to support the advancement of medical science. Biff Gore has a PhD in public health and has worked in the field of transplant for over 20 years. 
IFCOR also collaborated in the development of the Burn First Dermatomy, a surgical instrument that maximizes the usage of human skin for transplant and was instrumental in spearheading a national minority donor education initiative. Prior to his transplant career, Biff served in the U.S. Army Medical Corps as a surgical technologist in Nuremberg, Germany, and also at Walter Reed Medical Center in Washington, D.C., and was later trained as a surgical physician's assistant. Bill Gore lives in Denver with his wife, Marilyn, and has five children. He spends his free time playing guitar and writing music for his band, band Dr. Biff and the Smokehouse Blues Band. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Terry Biff Gordon. Thank you, President. Thank you, faculty, faculty, staff, students, class of 2013. incredible milestone in your life. You're going to look back at this day and you're going to say, I made it! And then tomorrow you're going to have to worry about making all those student loan payments. But before you think about that, I want you to think about three things. I have a three-point message for you today. First of all, if today was my commencement, what would I want to hear at my commencement ceremony? First of all, I would say, go out and buy yourself a good pair of shoes. <laughs> Seriously, they will serve you well. They will serve you all the days that you take care of them, just like that degree you have. You see, you need to go and buy yourself a conservative pair of shoes. It's nice to have, you know, comfortable shoes like Nike Airs or whatever, but go and buy yourself a real good pair of leather shoes. Because when you do, and you show up for that first job interview, and you're standing out there and you're shining your shoes up, you know, you know how you do before you go in for that job interview? <laughs> the first thing they're going to look at is your shoes. A little experiment for you next time you go shoe shopping. Don't go to pick and pay or whatever, or pay less. Now, there's anything wrong with that. But go to a good shoe store, okay? Well, you're gonna spend a little bit of money on your shoes, and I guarantee you when you walk in there, the first thing they're gonna do is look at your feet. Your employer is gonna do the same thing. They're gonna look at your feet, and they're gonna say, wow, this person cares about their dogs. <laughs> it's true. And they're gonna say, if this person takes care of their shoes, and their feet like that, they're gonna take care of my business like that. And they'll put you at the head of the class. I'm so glad and proud of you that today, and you've struggled all these years to get a degree. A degree, when you think about it, is a key. It's a key to a door. It's a key to a door that you can't see yet, but it's a key to a door that will open for you. And like one of the wisest men who ever lived, the Apostle Paul said, when Timothy wrote him one of his understudies, he said, hey, they're not taking me serious because I'm young. Well, I want you to know this. He told him, don't let anyone despise you because of your youth. And I'm not talking about your physical age. I'm talking about your education. Years ago, I remember watching um, these commercials that would come on television for the United Negro College Fund that said, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And it is. And you know what you've proven today? You've proven that you can go through the gauntlet. You can do everything that's required of you. And when your employer sees that, they're going to say, hey, I want to hire this person because they got all good shoes and they have a college degree. My second point today, and I'm not going to belabor it because you got a lot of people that want to come and talk to you. My second point today is lies. So the first point was what? Shoes. The second point is what? Lies. Okay. So, lies. I think that it is important for you to be truthful in everything you do. Everything. 
from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed. Because truth, again, is an indicator of your character. It's an indicator of who you are and how you've been raised. And one of the greatest compliments you can ever get from an employer or from yourself or from your employees is for people to say, I trust you. I trust you and I trust everything that you do. I can leave you alone and I know that the work is going to get done. That is a great feeling. That's one of the most important feelings you ever want to get because you don't want people, I mean, you, you know, you don't want people looking over your shoulder all the time. So be a person of your word. I think it's commendable, and I'm going to keep saying that over and over again, that you have dedicated yourselves in this span of time to do something great for yourselves and for your progeny, for your future. How many single moms do we have out here? How many single dads do we have out here? This is absolutely incredible. Give yourselves a round of applause. I remember when I was five years old, my mother, uh, my mother went back to nursing school. She was a, a classical pianist. She went to nursing school, and I remember taking her books, and I would read her books, and I was like, one day I'm gonna do something in the medical field. And you know what? That leads me to my third point. Dreams. What was the first point? Dreams. Second point? Lies. Third point? Dreams. Yes. Did you ever have a dream? Yes. Yeah. Woo. We have dreams all the time. I dream that one day I'll be singing on this stage. Never thought I'd be speaking on this stage, but I dream one day I'll be singing on this stage. And you know what? I'm not going to let anybody tell me that I can't do it. Now, there's certain things I can't do. I don't think I could ever be the premier of Spain. No one ever want to. But I could be president of the United States, right? Yeah, and so could you. So could you. Don't ever let anyone tell you that there's nothing that you can do. You must also tell yourself that you can do anything. As long as you have the right shoes and you don't tell lies. <laughs> but our dreams are important, aren't they? They are. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you something. You have these degrees. I see all these incredible degrees here. We have bachelor's degrees and associate degrees. Any master's degrees out here? Anyone? No? But we have master's degrees. We have certificate programs. We have all of these wonderful things, right? But one day, an opportunity is going to come open for you because you have a degree, and it is a key. That's right. Who said that? Put your hand up if you said key. Ah, it's a key. Now, 20 years from now, where do you see yourself doing? You don't have to blur it out loud. But I want you to dream when you go home tonight, after the festivities are over, after all of the fanfare is done, I want you to sit on the edge of your bed and have a conversation with yourself, because there's nothing wrong with that. I don't care what the psychiatrists tell you. You can talk to yourself, and it's okay to answer yourself too. I answer myself all the time. Like when I'm riding down the road and somebody cuts me up, I'm like, what is this fool doing? And I say, well, they don't know how to drive. That's what I answer back to myself. But it is okay to dream, it is okay to talk to yourself, it is okay to encourage yourself. Because if you don't do it, if you don't start to believe your own voice, nobody else will. No one else will. I said to myself, one day I'm going to own a business. You know what? Circumstances happen and I can own a business. And so could you. And don't just see yourself as being a drone for the rest of your life, a worker bee. See yourself doing great things and see yourself with a key to a door that you have the power to open and you have the power to close. So what was the first point? Get yourself some real good shoes. I'm talking about comfortable shoes, some good leather shoes, so when the leather wears out on the bottom of them, you can go to a cobbler and they'll put a new sole on it. You can keep wearing those shoes. Second point? Lies. 
Don't tell lies. Be truthful with yourself because the only thing you take with you from this life to the next is your integrity. And third, don't let anybody tell you you can't. As a matter of fact, the word can't, when you say it to yourself, means I won't. Congratulations, class of 2013. Thank you, Dr. Gore. I am proud to stand here today as your Dean of Education, as leader for faculty, very proud of our faculty. We can never recognize them enough. I'd love to give them another round of applause. This is my 10th graduation with College America, and every year I become more and more proud of our student body because it becomes more real the struggles that you go through to reach this accomplishment. And I think what Dr. Gore was talking about is opportunity, and that's what presents itself before you today and in your future. And you are the one that holds the key to that opportunity. We're here to support you today and every day after this. <laughs> During my college graduation, our dean stood up and began reading a poem, and immediately I recognized it as my most favorite poem of all time. So I'm not going to read you a long speech that I've written, but I'm going to share this poem with you. It's a guiding light for me as I graduated, and it remains one today. The title of the poem is Desiderata, and it's written by Max Ern. Go placidly amid the noise and haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on, all, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others. Even to the dull and ignorant, they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for there will always be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep being interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortune of times. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere, life is full of heroism. Be yourself. Especially, do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love. For in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of years, gracefully surrendering things of youth. Nurture spirit of strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. Do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome dis discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations, in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. I would now like to introduce our distinguished graduates. Alpha Beta Kappa is the premier national honor society for America's private post-secondary colleges and universities, serving many institutions for the past 33 years. The inductees into this honor society carry a strong academic record. At the time of induction, these students have completed at least 70% of their program, at least a 3.79 GPA, maintained outstanding attendance, and demonstrated strong leadership qualities, personal and professional integrity, as well as good moral character. Honor students, will you please rise as your name is called. Stuart Matlock. <laughs> Jessica Baker. Mona Herman. Michael Little. Kayla Spore. Monica Ward. Casey Gillier. Mandy Holt. Mark Kelly, 
Lynette Johnson, Rebecca Shafee, Heidi Stockdale, Tamara Rodriguez, Suhey Rodriguez, Sarah Gleason, Nicole Farrell, Cindy Dustin, Huda Alshwi, Amanda Torres, Heather Chavez, Felicia Belays, Myrtle Jones, Lisa Overman, Jocelito De La Reyes, Joseph Holderby, Cheryl Roadway, Renee Rosman, Jason Warner, and Heidi De Perret. Congratulations. I'd now like to introduce our first student speaker. Jessica Bart Baker was born in Granada Hills, California on January 18, 1989. She graduated from Ponderosa High School in 2007. She has two children, a son aged two and a daughter aged five. Jessica was motivated to go back to school by her younger brother, who had started college and was very successful at it. She also wanted to create a better life for her family and herself. Despite all the obstacles presented by having a family to raise as well as a full-time job, she has maintained a 4.0 GPA. Jessica has embodied leadership and dedication in her pursuit of a degree. She has been an outstanding example to her fellow students and a pleasure for her instructors to work with. Today she is graduating with an Associate of Occupational Studies degree in Medical Specialties. Please welcome our salutatorian, Ms. Jessica Baker. Welcome and good evening everyone. I would like to say thank you for the honor of standing up here tonight. We have all worked so hard to get to this moment. I have to admit, I had the hardest time writing this speech. When I first got the call from our Dean of Education, I was shocked, excited, and completely terrified. I spent a whole week just looking at a blank sheet of paper. But once I let go of all my fears, it all just kind of came flowing out. We all had that first day of school fear, asking ourselves questions like, can we do this and will we be successful? Everyone here today can now stand up and say, yes, we can do it, and we did do it. When we walked into our first day of class, Psych 101, we were asked to set a goal. My goal was to graduate with a 3.5 or higher. I have surpassed my goal, and I am now graduating with a 4.0. We all had to set a goal that day, and by being here tonight, we have achieved part of that goal. But Clave Hagel said, vision is not enough. We must combine it with venture. It is not enough to stare at the steps, but we must also step up the stairs. We all had that one class that made us want to rip out our hair and run screaming for the hills. But there were a few things stopping us. There were those instructors that made us want to go to class today because they loved their field and they had a passion for what they were teaching us. They pushed us forward and they taught us never to give up. They also taught us to have confidence in ourselves. There are also our fantastic support systems, our family, our friends, both old and the new ones we've made here, that have helped us achieve this momentous milestone in our lives. They kept pushing us to the end. They believed in us, and they knew we couldn't give up. Katherine Hepburn said, we are taught you must blame your father, your sisters, your brothers, the school, and the teachers, but never blame yourself. It is never your fault, but it is always your fault. Because if you wanted to change, you are the one who has got to change. Everyone in this room made the decision to change their lives. We all took that step to better ourselves. As we graduate here tonight, take great pride in all that you have accomplished. I would like to thank everyone here in support of myself and my fellow graduates our family, friends, instructors, deans, and the rest of our